go to Oklahoma State again. Just a bizarre season, a truly Big Twelve season last year. They start out five and zero. They have the momentum. They're winning in Fort Worth the first half. They kind of dominated in the first half, and then TCU gets the momentum right at the end. The second half is all uh, Horn Frogs, and they beat. Oklahoma State in double overtime in Fort Worth, 43-40. Injuries start to mount up, but that doesn't stop Oklahoma State from beating Texas. No, no, no. At home, they they knock out the Longhorns. And then just back-to-back, like gut punch and then haymaker, 48 nothing to Kansas State. They're playing their four-string quarterback. They lose to Kansas State. Again, they beat Iowa State, uh, who can't score against tackling dummies. Uh, they lose to Oklahoma. They lose to West Virginia. They lose a, a close game to Wisconsin when all the backups are playing. Seven and six, four and five. And yet Mike Gundy has not had a losing season since he took over in 2005. So as you look at this 2023 schedule, it's a it's a kind of hair-raising start to non-conference. At Arizona State, I, I don't think they're going to be favored in that. It's not a pushover win. And then, guys, South Alabama comes to town. It's a tough game. It's a yep. very tough game. South Alabama is one of the dark horses to be the G5 representative in the nearest six games. I don't know who's scheduling these non-conference games for Oklahoma State, but they like when they bring a um you know a group of five team in like Central Michigan, they don't put them away. <laughs> they struggle. Uh, so they probably should you know. I, I don't know. Maybe they need to, to fire that guy. They need to, you know, have an intervention, do a round table, something. Stop scheduling the South Alabamas of the G5 to come to town because I'm kind of concerned they lose that game. Uh, but anyway, getting into the team, team strength, I wrote offense is going to go burr. Uh, <laughs> that team should score a lot of points. Now, all of that is in, incumbent upon. Alan Bowman being healthy, right? Mm -hmm. If you get the Texas Tech version of Alan Bowman, who's on his third stop in four or three years, third stop in three years, technically, because he was at Michigan for a little bit. Texas Tech, then to Michigan, now to Oklahoma State. If you get the Texas Tech version, he threw for 2,600 yards, 18 touchdowns as a true freshman before he suffered a minor injury and punctured his lung. Um, The problem with Alan Bowman is he's had so many injuries throughout his career, whether it's a punctured lung, whether it's a sprain, a strain, a bump, a bruise, it's really hard to keep him healthy and on the field. Ollie Gordon is going to be a big help. Bowling ball between the tackles. Shout out uh, Euless Trinity, right? Um, local kid, very, very productive receiver or running back. They're going to rely on him a lot this year. The receivers are going to be interesting. Um, you get Brennan Presley back, who was your leading receiver last season, over 800 yards. Arlen Bruce, the fourth, transfers in from Iowa. He, shocker, wanted to be thrown the football, so he left Iowa. Uh, and then you have Dijon Stribling, who comes in from Washington State as well. So three pretty solid starters. I like the receiving core. Losing John Paul Richardson hurts, but I think you're going to be fine. On the defense, you've got two standouts. You've got Colin Oliver, who's a great linebacker, um, was an edge rusher, but now he's going to shift back to linebacker in the 3-3-5. That's going to allow him to be a little bit more um, more of a hybrid role, right? He can rush the passer, yeah. but he can also defend the run, hold the edge. And then you've got Ken, uh, Kendall Daniels, freshman All-American last season, Big 12 defensive freshman of the year, elite cornerback for Oklahoma State. So I get down to their schedule, and Trey, shout out you for mentioning that they're the only team in the Big 12 to play all four newcomers this season. That's interesting. It's a tricky start with the non-conference, but they miss Texas. Their conference schedule isn't that terrible. And so, guys, despite not having a quarterback who's proven anything in the last three years, despite having to you know, kind of go a new direction with the running back, with wide receiver, not having an elite defense last year, and losing a lot of production, I still wonder if this team can get to eight wins. I mean, point to me on that schedule where you're just shaking in your boots. Yeah, I mean, the schedule makers did both schools in Oklahoma quite a favor in this one. Uh, At Arizona State could be interesting at the beginning of the year. I don't know that Arizona State's going to be fully operational yet this year. But you're absolutely right. I mean, they host Kansas State and Oklahoma, their two toughest conference games. They also host Kansas, probably their third toughest conference game. And 
they again avoid the big Texas three of Texas Tech and TCU that nowhere to be found on the schedule. So to me, they could schedule their way to nine wins as a ceiling. I think that that's not completely out of the question. I mean, you know, losing to Oklahoma, Kansas State, and maybe a random one here or there. I, I don't see that. If Alan Bowman's healthy, the, the ceiling could be even higher than that to me. Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking at this, and I, I have a question for you guys here. So when I looked at Oklahoma State and what they have working there, there's a lot of guys that transferred out. Yeah. That, that's kind of my only issue with Oklahoma State. I'm right there with you guys. Schedule sets up real nice and easy. But there's a lot of guys that transferred out. Obviously, a lot of new faces coming in as well. But, you know, there's going to be a lot of guys who have to look at and say, yeah, this is this is going to be – who's going to step up? Who's going to be that? How concerned are we for all the new faces meshing together? And then I guess the other thing is with the schedule as easy as it is, what would it take – and, you know, I'm not trying to look too far in the future, but what would you actually say is like a failing season for Oklahoma State this year? Right, what would you say is like, oh, if they don't hit this mark, this is a failure, and they really have to think about what their team looks like going into the future of the Big 12? Failing is not going to a bowl game. I, I think that's pretty cut and dry for me. But to answer your other question, uh, compared to TCU, just because we haven't seen it yet with Sonny Dykes, Mike Gundy is so, so good. Maybe one of the best in the country at tailoring his offense, especially to what he has in the room. Right. Like you think about a couple of years ago when they had uh, Chuba Hubbard running for 2000 yards. Right. He knew that he had an elite running back. He's going to ride that running back into the ground. No. Last couple of years, they didn't have that elite talent at running back. They had good players at running back, but they had Spencer Sanders, who was really good at distributing the ball to a bunch of wide receivers. So if Alan Bowman's healthy, I think he's a really good distributor of the football. He can make electric plays when healthy. And Mike Gundy is going to scheme around that. So I'm not really as concerned as I am with TCU, just because Gundy's done this for dang near two decades at Oklahoma State, just finding a way with what he has in that room. And I think that combined with the schedule this year gives me a lot of optimism for them. I think, I think failure is, is probably six and six or yeah, having the first losing season um, for Oklahoma State. I don't see that happening, but you're right. Anytime you have a bunch of transfers come in to fill fill holes, there there's absolutely a risk. I think I think that schedule is soft enough to where they'll they'll cobble it together. Gracious, yeah. how about that?